Hi guys, welcome to another first impressions review with myself and Marta. We are having a look at Pyre, finally. This is of course the next game from Supergiant, the guys behind Bastion and Transistor, so quite the pedigree. Uh, just an FYI, I did actually purchase this game myself, it's only $14.99 if I recall correctly, so I just bought it. Uh, before we go into like the actual game and blah blah blah, let's have a quick look at the settings. As you can see, resolution options, full screen and borderless. Given the art style, that's what you really need. You've got a bunch of options here as well. As you can see, I will turn subtitles on for you guys. And as you can see, you can have your gender and your difficulty change pretty much whenever you want. So, just for an FYI, this game does work perfectly well on keyboard and mouse, but I've actually been using the controller just because it's nice to kind of relax and not have to sit on the chair to play this game. But I think honestly, it's easily playable both ways. So yeah, let's go into the campaign and we can kind of get into what this game actually is. The first thing you will of course notice is the fact that this game is absolutely stunning and you will see that as we go around the surroundings. Now this game is very different to the other Supergiant games and let's just kind of discover that together. Now as you're basically playing as a reader and you'll know what that means in a second and you're going around with a group of exiles who are trying to achieve freedom. Oh by the way, um, this is a heavy story, heavily story-based game, and all the story is delivered in text. It's very text-based, um, so I'm probably not going to be able to avoid spoilers at all, really. But I will, I will just so expect small spoilers throughout. But if there's anything big, I will put up a warning just for you. Why? So, anyway, you have this little wagon that you travel around in, and you can sort of go in, have a poke around, and sometimes there'll be people here for you to talk to. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff in here that I can interact with like what is this but to keepsakes from our travels and we've got this book of rights which is basically the law and as you can see it has a rather lovely opening animation and as you can see we have got a bunch of stuff on the Emperor's fall but now we've sort of discovered the rest of the book as it were. I've played about three hours of this game and it's only really just opened up. It does, I mean, I say opened up, it's not like super linear or anything, but you'll see what I mean. So, up until this point, we've basically been following a linear progression of, of a path. So we can only go one direction, follow the story, but now we have multiple directions to choose from and the story is very much opening up and we have a brand new character here who is kind of like the guy we've been hearing about all game but we haven't actually seen and he kind of owns this wagon and has a bunch of history with it and that sort of thing so let's go with Bertrude's aid it escorted you across the sea to me now it shall escort us anywhere the stars require come and see Something has changed about the wagon's interior. What looked before to be old cracks and signs of age now expose various intricate components once hidden from you. You are the night wings. As you can see when you hover, you get these little lore things, which is pretty cool. You should travel in their customary way. He turns to you, indicating levers and devices marked with symbols from the book. Now, reader, whenever you're ready, you may take us up. I'll show you how. We're gonna fly? We're gonna fly! Okay, we recently got our wagon fitted out so we could go across the sea, and now we're going to fly. All right. <laughs> wow, okay. After having soared into the sky, the black wagon remains aloft somehow. This little fellow is one of our fellow exiles, very cute and dashing, as you can see. Alright, so, <laughs> as you can see, this is the meat of the game, although this is obviously the first I'm seeing of the flying wagon. 
as, and as I was saying, the game is absolutely stunning. And can I go to like any of these? No, I can't. Okay. But I, will, I am just kind of appreciating not only the wonderful animations of the wagon, but also just how gorgeous this game looks like. Super Giant just not only make their games look gorgeous, just look really unique. I mean, what other game looks like this, really? I can't think of any off the top of my head. So, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting one, to say the least. Oh, wait, we have a boost, of course. Of course we have a boost. So we're kind of going... Oh, hello. Who are you? I'm guessing there are rivals. Yep, looks like it. They somehow all have flying wagons as well. We're kind of literally flying over the whole of the game that I've experienced so far there. So the whole story about the reader thing is that the ability to read seems to be incredibly rare and it also seems to be illegal as well. Um, and that's why we were exiled as far as I could tell. We don't really know that much about ourselves, even after a few hours of play. I've only really gathered that we've been, we were exiled because we don't we know how to read and we collected books and we shouldn't have done. And um, all the other exiles were exiled for their own various reasons. And we're basically just here to fight for our freedom. And there's a bigger plan in play that may or may not come up. I don't want to mention it just in case it doesn't come up because I don't want to spoil it. It's a, pr it's a fairly big reveal that you only get to after it's a, like the three hours worth of play. I've only just got past it, basically. So, we yeah, met others such as Witch Udmild. Who believe otherwise, though, although whichever their beliefs, I know none which go near the place unless the stars demanded it. And that's how you're coming right against the pyre hearts, take place in complete secrecy, as always the rights have. Can we land? Aha! Um, sure, we need some money. Let's land here. You return to the dismal region known as Flagging Hands, straight away since an air of dread, yet cling to hope that you can make your stay as brief as possible. You and the others check the wagon from top to bottom for any signs of wear. Tizo double checks the air brakes and reports that they are working as expected. May finds the cabin pressurizer acting up again and causing her concern. A swift kick makes the problem go away for now, leaving you all some time to yourselves before the day is done. Nonetheless, the dismal environs soon take their toll on everyone. Now, oh, minus one hope. Oh. Alright, so let's have a chat with somebody, shall we? There's a few things to explain as we go. There is a lot about this game. Like, the real meat of this game is not only in the story and not how, as you can see, how heavily text based it is, but the combat is really, really unique. Now, I'm, I've got a feeling the text based nature of this game is going to be a bit of a point of contention because obviously the other two games from these guys are quite famous for their wonderful narration, especially Bastion, but Transistor had some great narration as well. Um, there is narration in this game, but it's resigned for the battles. Everything else is heavily text-based. It is a very lore-heavy game, a different style of storytelling from previous. I like it, but obviously if you were expecting Bastion or Transistor style, you're not going to find it here. And this game is so far beyond those games in terms of like it's very very different transistor was at least vaguely similar to bastion this is not even slightly similar but let's chat to sir gilman here who's one of our fellow exiles sir gilman is shivering there after the black winds made through the wind voyage through the skies master reader this night is very very slightly out of sorts is all he merely appears terrified but he assures you that his seeming cowardice is but an optical illusion in this case <laughs> Pamitha overhears and joins you. Flying's not for everyone, Sir Knight. This knight heartily concurs, though how anyone at all can stand it, he is yet to understand. Well, let's see. What is it like to swim? What's it like to swim the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah, there's glorious murky waters engulfed in hideous warfare, to be sure. But otherwise, a joy to cut across to feel the coolness of the waves be one one's gill slits and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to his life above the surface. Flying's just the same, Sir Knight. It resists those of us not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seas are like, but the thought of swimming fills me with disgust. Though, I haven't had to swim, and now you have to fly. That's very brave of you, and you handed it better than some heart fledgings I've met in my day. You'll get used to it. She departs, but since Sir Gilman is feeling better after the exchange. Oh, nice. So, as you can see, we have a lot of trinkets around that are kind of belonging to each of our friends and you can kind of see where they are around and that sort of thing, which is pretty cool. 
And there is something with this, but I'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to confuse things by jumping into that too early. So, let's get into the game itself, because to really explain this, I need to show you the combat. So, you accompany the lone minstrel in pursuit of his task here. Speak not directly to the living shade, and be true to your heart when responding to its inquiries, and make no attempt to look it in the eye. The lone minstrel, overseas and otherwise of advice, is approached to bury a mounds of cold note, where many exiles of downside see their final days. A glimmer of shade appears before you as you stand surrounded by the dead. You barely see it, and it does not speak, but you feel its thoughts piercing your heart and mind. According to the shade, the book that you possess may lay some of the fallen here to rest. The shade leads you to your work. You turn through the book, locating passages concerning freedom and the spirits. You recite such words as seem best to fit each other. The fallen you see, it is draining work. The shade resurfaces after a while. It leads you to a hollowed stump, then fades away. Ooh. A knock shroom. Ah, that's worth 50 gold. That's pretty nice. I mean, you could definitely use the cash, that's for sure. At dawn, everyone seems to have recovered from the rigours of your maiden voyage across the skies. It is time to return the pit to the pit of Malith and confront the Pyre Hearts once again. So yeah, as the game kind of suggested, we have been here before. Um, we just, again, flew back over most of the game that I've seen so far. I'm assuming there are other parts of the game I haven't seen yet, but, you know, we shall, we shall see. The rights are the main sort of combat of the game and it's not worth trying to explain it until you see it so all right let's go to the slug market which is pretty much what it sounds like hey guys come in come on in say now whatever happened to the smiley headwind guy did he really get out of here like i've been hearing or what he certainly did but let's not go on to that okay let's see let's sell this because it's not really useful to us what do you have? Twilight Shard, Fling in the Orb. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's quite nice, but that's really expensive. Right, let's, let's grab this. This is for upgrading our talismans, which I'll show you in a second. I might want to grab this. I don't know. What do we have? So, here we have the screen where we can have a look at what the abilities that we have, as well as the talismans we have equipped. I have yet to find a way to have more than one talisman equipped, but let's have a look. So, we have this on Joe Dariel at the moment, who is a very cool looking demon, and it gives her a bigger aura. I don't know if it's going to mean anything to you, but. I just wanted to show you this while I have a quick look at if it's anything worth upgrading right now. Um, hmm. Maybe that? Yeah. Alright. We'll come back to this after when I can actually explain it properly because like words like aura don't really mean much to you guys at the moment. All right. Everything is set for the right to commence, and all is quiet amid the muddy bleakness of the pit of Malief. All there is left to do is to wait for nightfall to set it. You observe Sir Gilman sliding back and forth, back and forth. You sense something is weighing on his mind. This night, this night, this night is not a night at all. This knight betrayed his former commander, abandoned his brethren of the Sea Dominion, but what is knighthood even? What is knighthood if it means having to follow such a craven as Sir Deluge? Cease this nonsense, Gelman. Focus on the right. Focus on the right. Focus on the right. He notices you, finally. Oh, Master Reader, this knight did not see you there just now, such as his preoccupation, preoccupation with the task at hand. Note this knight stands prepared. He has no misgivings whatsoever when it comes to battling his ex-triumvirate. Please consider letting this knight partic participate, for he has honour to restore. Then, a glimmering within the sky draws you and your, his attention. Breeder, ever pass 
persevering, aren't we? Well then, rejoice, because the cycle of the rites begins anew. Perhaps you'll liberate another soon enough. Your chosen adversaries here shall be the Pyre Hearts. Reduce their flame to ash, just as you did when last you met. Now, who exactly shall oppose them? Gilman, still not abandon your new friends like all your other duties and responsibilities? So Delany dresses with his mask for a time. This this night is most surprised that you have the courage to show yourself. You speak of courage, Sir Deluge, but this knight has little else to say the like to the likes of you. That that, that figures, Gilman, you are no knight at all. You're a teensy minnow swimming in a sea of minnows many, many times your size. And with much more honour too. And something comes over Sir Gilman. But soon it fades. Sir Gilman slinks away. D -d Disgraceful, you nightwings, you are stupid to take that one in, and you are no good to at the right. And another thing. We do not fear you. You seem to be pretty terrified to me, mate, but whatever. Alright. Oh, hang on, this way. Got more ticks to get through first. <laughs> this night's companions have grown so much stronger since we dumped that worth of Sir Gilman. You sense that Gilles de Luge speak the truth, the Pie Huds are much more capable than before. Okay. Oh, we have more information. Interesting. Ah, okay. This wasn't available before. You can literally see their abilities and talismans. Interesting. Ooh, that's pretty good. Wait, is that if he banishes or is banished? Ooh. Okay, do not use close range guys on him. Like, ever. Okay. Alright. So... Shut up, I'm talking. <laughs> So basically you can only have three at a time and we have all these people to choose from and each of them have their different abilities and strengths and I'm going to go with Joe Dariel because she basically makes a, a really good goalkeeper as you'll see. Now the aura that we saw earlier is this circle here. Now basically if anyone walks into that aura they die instantly and it obviously protects you as well um, but you can also fire that aura at people and obviously how big and slow etc that blast is depends on your character and there's more to it in just a second but let's continue with our choosings shall we let's go with Tizo. let's go with him and then we've barely used her so let's try her out Very well. those pirate hearts are so cruel to our friend Gilman I don't think that should be allowed C come then night wings Sh show this night you would defend the honor of that miserable minnow when you harbor on guard So yeah, the aim of this particular battle is to get the orb into your enemy's pyre. That is how you deal damage, and that is how you win, by getting their pyre to zero. Now when you have the orb, as you may have noticed, you no longer have your aura. So obviously you are at risk when you pick it up. And it's actually better for me here not to try and pick it up and instead just try and get rid of our enemy until a faster character can get to it. Unfortunately it was not fast enough there and now all of our friends are banished. Basically you're not dead and you will actually come back eventually. Ooh. Now, a cool thing is that I have a pretty nice talisman on Tizo, that little imp thing, where whenever they die, they leave a sort of teleportation thing behind. So I just use that to basically... ...to try and... 
basically not have to deal with the enemy at all. Alright, let's try and use our flutter ability here. Can we make it? No, not quite. God damn it. Come on. Yes! So as you can see, it's all about passing your orb and using your different abilities of your team to work together and quench the enemy's pyre. Now this game, this combat is actually really micro-intensive. Um, talking and doing it at the same time is actually quite difficult because there's quite a lot of micro involved. But uh, it's, it's, it's very unique. It's almost like a sports game where you're basically scoring goals on your enemy and there is even a uh, one versus one like, uh, versus mode. It's so local only, unfortunately. They should really do it in multiplayer. I would play the shit out of that. So you can kind of see how it's like a sports game, you know, passing to each other, using your abilities to basically score goals on your opponent. It's very different, very unique, and you can kind of see why I had to explain it to you guys. Anyway, just, just to make it quick and painless on this night because it looks like it's over for us pretty much. Oh, there we go. That's fine. One triumvirate stands unopposed. That's fine, because I just... Oh, that was close. Come on. Oh, that was... Oh! Ow. Although... Um, Unfortunately, that left the all pretty much in my pyre, which was not great, but hey ho. Yeah, if you say so there, narrator. Oh. Now, I can try and throw the orb into the pyre, but the only, the main issue with doing that is the throw charge is quite slow. I don't like throwing myself, because I feel like you have to be pretty lucky to actually get it. There we go, it's fine. Oh, that was close. Alright. Let's just run for it. Ah! Ooh. That was. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Alright. Right, you grab it. Oh, that was pretty close though. Oh, come on! How did I not get him on my explodey thing? Because the, uh, the owl, whatever it is, has a pretty nice ability actually, where instead of, like, casting his aura, he, um, Basically, does a AOE explosion, which is pretty nice. But obviously, it does mean he, that kills him as well. But there we go. He has an ability to come back instantly, but it is sort of like a chance thing. Whew, that was a bit messy, but we got there in the end. <laughs> Curse you, Gilman. You're a fool to abandon. There's no unit twisted dagger in our backs. You still do not seem to understand, said Deluge. This knight is no longer beholden to the likes of you. This knight is bound only by the path toward enlightenment. Your words bring false. You are unfit to lead. Shut up. You know exactly what you are, Gilman. You call this knight a craven. It encourages mere facade, and everybody knows. Everybody knows. This knight shall see to it. Sir Gilman does not respond, although you sense the words of Sir Deluge got to him. Right, so here we have the ability screen. And we have several abilities we can get. Let's see. At the start of the right, Joe Dario's Pyre automatically gains plus 35. That's actually pretty good. Any episodes banished by Joe Dario take 30% longer than usual to return. Ooh, that's really good. After using Rush to lunge forward, Joe Dario can rush again right away. That's 
As much as I want this, I think I'll get that next time. This is actually pretty good because she's quite slow, so using a little more speed would be good. Something's awakened in the moon touched girl. Alright, let's see. The may the brief charge at time for may jumps or sprints is virtually eliminated, or the brief charge at time for may can cast her aura is greatly reduced. Hmm. I'd say that one. From the rope collar. The imp Tizo appears to have a certain depth of knowledge. Okay, what do we have? If banished, Tizo automatically casts his implode ability if he does not possess the orb. When saluting his episodes, Tizo turns into a fast moving howler or back. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I don't know, he's got the orb lock because he's quite fast, so I think I'm going to go with this. Alright, so now let's have another look at these... Oh, never mind, I can't. I was going to say, let's have a look at the uh, talisman screen, now that I can actually explain it a bit clearer, now that you know what aura is and all that means. So I just noticed that it's absolutely chucking it down outside, which is uh, interesting. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, it's... Yeah, pretty much pissing it down. You return to the wagon after you and your fellow exiles prevail against the pirate hearts and find Volfrid waiting for you there. Well done back there, my girl. You are serving your companions well. Now then, I have something that I wish to share with you, if you've a moment. We discussed the plan, of which we're all apart. I have a means of measuring our progress towards the goal of it. Uh, I'm just going to say out loud, in case I forget, spoiler warning for the larger story. Okay? Spoiler warning. Got it? We good? Alright. I'd love for you to have a look at it. First, let's determine where the rites may take us next. Look forth. I shall expect you to see several shining stars where you once saw but one. Ah, yeah. So, as he says, earlier on in the game, before I kind of got this far, there was only one star in the sky and only one place I could go to. Now I pretty much can go wherever I want. Several shining stars, a trick of the eye or the will of the scribes, who can say? I too once gained this newfound vision many years ago, following my first liberation rite, and I believe only we, only we of the Nightwings have this gift. I realise that in choosing whom the Nightwings confront in each rite, we in turn influence which triumvirate we face when the time comes for someone to be set free. The object I invite you to use contains further detail. Alright, cool. That's a new thing. Oh god. Using Volfred's plan, he may assess your progress towards your ultimate goals, as well as checking the current standings of your adversaries. Volfred shall keep this information up to date for the remainder of your quest. You may look over it now or any time in the Black Wagon while, or while searching the stars. So, this is a new screen. That is a bunch of information. I'm kind of getting a bit mind flooded, so... It's pretty good. So, how do we know? Ah, okay. So it looks like at the moment, the most likely is the essence, the withdrawn, the fate. They, they seem more equally likely to face us in the final right. Um, okay, interesting. So we can kind of prepare for that final one, I guess. Interesting. So yeah, as I was saying, um, end spoiler warning by the way. As I was saying, um, before there was only one star and this is kind of how the game opens up a little bit. So we can go here, and that enemy's pretty cool. We can go here. This is where we just were, obviously. Well, we could even go all the way up there, but Let's uh, let's go here. I think to call the video. We're uh, going to be butting heads against that old Barker again, are we, sister? I guess it helps to know ahead of time, so I can brush up on my groveling. He then shares with you what he knows of your next opponents. I love this music for this guy. Just listen to it.
Anyway, Barker Ashpores, a vo volatile cur whose pack the dissidents conduct the rights for more so for thrill than freedom. Back on the other side, Barker never quite took to the culture of the Commonwealth and often ran afoul of the law for various acts of boorishness or vandalism. He was promised to go straight, and in time he found a certain niche, for he was an accomplished hunter. The people of the Commonwealth did have an appetite. Barker relished to hunt more than anything and spent his earnings on a variety of questionable things. On a particularly raucous evening, Barker was caught relieving himself on the foot of the statue of the Arch Justice Androloves IV. And that was the end of his citizenship. In the downside, it seems he caught the notice of the dissidents, who in turn must have observed his speed, ferocity, and fearlessness. He is now the best of them. Barker's reputation grew among the exiled curs of Yomer Valley region, where he is feared and unafraid of taking what he wants. Not long after they flushed me down and tried to make ends meet and make a deal with him, in hindsight, let's just say it was a bad idea. He could make my life go real sour if he wants. Anyway, I better go pass out. We've got a long few days ahead. Alright. Let's uh, have a poke around the wagon, shall we? That's the planner. Oh, we have some new there, which I'll show you in a second. So Gilman is in a complicated mood. He has been rather quiet, at least more than usual, ever since his confrontation with Sir Deluge. He's noticed as you there and slides forth in a solemn manner. He knows this night. He knows what he shall do now. When all this is over, Master Reader, we worm knights. We are all born to and raised to prove ourselves superior to all the other billions of our kind to lead lives however short with glory. For the moment, we shall pass our wormling brethren into the exact to the very end. We are conditioned to excel to prevail at all costs. This relentless pursuit of glory, of fame, of self worth it leads most of this knight's kind early only to an early doom. Or in this case of Sir Deluge, it leads to a life of falsehood, a life of low deceit. Abusing one fellow worm knights, shirking one's responsibility, living in constant fear, this knight cannot obey his fallen commander, yet pities him. There must be one more to honour than to lead a life engulfed in endless conflict. He looks at you intently. This knight shall seek that honour out when all of his ascended master reader, then he vows to you, and he's ever grateful that your guidance led him to his new awakening. But, until such time, this knight is duty bound unto the night wings. Thus, the fulfilment of our plan and the our pursuit of freedom is to be his final quest. For what awaits him afterwards is no mere quest. The honour that this knight has sought is cannot be fully achieved through knighthood, can it? It requires something more. I trust you understand. He slivers off his head held high, knowing that million pride, something has changed in him. Nice! Alright, so I'm pretty much going to be wrapping up the video as I go through my thoughts. I mean, you kind of, I've kind of mostly been going through the details of the game and showing you of it because it's kind of hard to explain my thoughts on it without explaining to you the mechanics because with this game it's a bit strange. You can't just say, oh, it's a, it's a platformer or it's an action RPG or whatever. Like with Transistor and Bastion, you can kind of say, it's an action RPG with these elements, blah, blah, blah. With Transistor, oh, it's a action RPG with turn-based elements. So you can kind of pre-plot your pre-plan your route and blah 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 but this is like it's kind of a sports game <laughs> question mark like it's hard to explain so overall i love i love this game it is very very different from their previous titles and i do have a feeling that's going to be a bit contentious among many people um i think many were hoping for another in the vein of bastion and transistor but even those two games although they are kind of similar are very very different from each other so i'm not really surprised to see them continue to explore and continue to try new things and not only for themselves but in the industry i can't think of another game like this really the heavy lore the characters the writing all superb the soundtrack as you'd expect is excellent the combat is very micro intensive very intense um, it was quite difficult to, for me to commentate and play at the same time, I'm not going to lie. Um, and just really unique. I can't think of a game like this, to be honest. Even if there's something similar, like this is something new, this is something different. And that is what Supergiant loves to do. So let's finish up by having a poke around the wagon. So we've got some fungus, because that's him safe to have around. And we have some more lore here. Which is cool. What's up this? Okay. Oh, I can kind of... Oh wait, I did... There! I want to touch the thing. <laughs> nice. Alright, one last thing I want to show you guys is this thing. Now, I... Fairly early on in the game, like an hour or two in, you get the Beholder Crystal which has this person in. 
and you can do some practice rides, talk to and stuff, but you can also do scribe trials, which are basically challenge modes for single characters, and you can get some custom talismans just for them. So let's see if we can quickly show you one before I wrap up. So it seems we can only do Sir Gilman at the moment. Master Reader, is this blind per chance in trouble for something? Nope, you're good. You're gonna get something shiny if you do well. Or if I do well, I guess. Right, so as I said, this is basically a thing where you are on your own and you earn yourself a pretty nice... Oh, ow. That was painful. Pretty nice talisman if you manage to see, which is a pretty big if, to be fair. Now, he doesn't actually have an aura like the others. He, um... Oh, ow. I... Okay, I keep not noticing that I can't pass through that. That was really terrible of me. I, I deserve that. He instead leaves a trail behind him, and what he actually has is an ability to kind of go back exactly the way he came. So that basically you can kind of go around the enemy, do the slash, and when they go through your trail that you've left, you can... Ow! Got fucking destroyed there. Basically use that against them. So like, if I kind of try and wall off here... Ow, I've walked right into that somehow. Um, you can essentially kind of block off. He's very different to everyone else. Okay, I... I need to stop being so terrible, because I'm about to lose. Right, let's go! Oh, come on! <laughs> I was so close! Alright, let's restart. This is terrible. This is actually terrible. Oh, come on! Okay. I need to do something about him because I literally couldn't even get close. Okay, I got him. Got him. So as you can see, it is quite a strong ability, but it is fairly difficult to use. Ow, okay, it was faster than I expected. Okay, I, I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the button I need. There we go. Got him. Or her. Could be a her. There we go. Oh, I couldn't quite squeeze past. <laughs> I'm trying to use his smaller size to try and kind of, like sneak around the enemy, but obviously kind of misjudged it there. Interesting. I can kind of do a little bounce with the orb there. I wonder if I can use that to protect myself. Hmm. Come on then. Come on. Try it. Interesting, I can. Oh, ow. Okay. So as you can see, like, the ability to kind of fling the orb and then catch it again, you can kind of see, like, how micro e this game can actually be. <laughs> like, I could really do some, like, crazy stuff if I was actually good enough and obviously not talking at the same time. 
Ooh. Ow. Oh, wasn't quite fast enough there. And I'm dead. Well, I'm not dead, but I lost. You kind of get the idea, though. Like, it is very, very different to all the rest of the games. And... Yeah, let's go stronger first. Uh, yeah, it's very, very different, not only their past games, but to pretty much any game I've ever played. It has a really rich lore, it has a really beautiful art style, great music, great writing. Honestly, if you wanted another sort of action RPG thing, um, then obviously you're not going to find it here, but you are going to find something that's definitely worth your time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.